Hi, my name is Duran Hunt. Um, uh, I've got a traumatic brain injury. Um, I sustained that injury uh, in December 2019, Christmas Day. And um, yeah, it's been a very, it's been a tough journey, but it's, you can do it, you can do it. So yeah, that's me. Yeah, and my name is Matthew Nakaneski. I'm a speech and language therapist at Speech Therapy Northeast, and yeah, Duran's one of our clients. And uh, yeah, uh, as part of Duran's speech and language therapy input, we've been um, supporting Duran to yeah to reach his goal of, of becoming a motivational speaker and and delivering his presentation to as uh, to as many audiences as, as he possibly can. In our time spoke with Duran Hunt and his speech and language therapist Matthew Nakaneski at one of the Northern Acquired Brain Injury Forum's quarterly meetings where both were giving speeches to members of the forum. We spoke with Duran on his experiences as a brain injury survivor and what advice he has for fellow brain injury survivors, as well as healthcare professionals working with patients with a brain injury. Matthew gives us insight into working with brain injury patients like Duran, cognitive communication disorders, and how group therapy is empowering those with these disorders. First, Duran tells us what healthcare professionals working with brain injury patients should be aware of and how they can help to provide the best possible patient experience. Um, I would say it's to understand us, to listen to us, and to mainly just, I wouldn't say, yeah, work with us. Just work with us, listen to us is the main thing in my eyes, really. The more, we, the more you listen, the more we understand each other better, the more we work better together, the more the journey is going to go smoothly for us, for rehabilitation and for the healthcare professionals as well. So, yeah, it's mainly listening. Um, just taking consideration is going to be harder for us, but again, if we work as a team, you get, th you get stuff done. So, yeah. We asked Matthew to give us insight on what the first steps were when he was presented with Duran as a patient. Yeah, so okay, well, as, as, with, as with any client, obviously we do, we do a, a thorough assessment of, of a person's communication um, sort of skills and, and sort of areas that they might have difficulty with. Um, uh, and then, yeah, set some goals uh, around what, what a client wants to work on. So I think in the early days, um, actually it was one of our other, uh, an associate therapist of, of, of our team um, was involved with Duran first, and I think you guys were a little bit more around. I think at the time you had a little bit more of a stammer, is that right, yeah. Duran? Yes. Um, especially when you were a little bit, uh, a little bit anxious about a situation, mm -hmm. so sort of worked through that. Just worked how worked with you around sort of communicating in busy environments like you know on public transport and things like yeah. that. Um, and then yeah, over time, uh, Duran then uh, got involved with one of our um, social communication groups. Um, which, which I'll be talking about early, uh, later on today. Um, and that was, that was a real confidence booster, I think, for you. And it was really nice for you to be involved with other people who've had, a, who've had an acquired brain injury. And I think through that, you know, in terms of you feeling like you were supporting other people within that group, I think that kind of built on your desire to kind of give something back and, 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 and do some motivational speaking. Um, and then, yeah, that's kind of been our main, our main piece of work hasn't it for, yeah, for a little while now and uh, yeah we've, you, you've, you've done some great presentations to different audiences already but yeah you want more, yeah, I want more. <laughs> you want more. As well as supporting Duran, Matthew was at Nabef's quarterly meeting to present on the benefits of a project-based social communication group for treating cognitive communication disorder. We asked Matthew about the benefits of group-based therapy and what the current landscape of cognitive communication disorders looks like in the UK. Yeah, so um, yeah, so we run a social communication group um, for our clients at the moment, um, uh, but our groups ha ha have a project focus um, for lots of reasons. Um, it just it just makes things a little bit more meaningful, and it makes our group members feel very empowered that they're working towards a particular project. Um, but in terms of what the project is that's completely up to the group members. Um, you know, we can give a little nudge as therapists, but ultimately we want our group members to, to decide what they want to work on. Um, so for our, our more recent communication group, um, yeah, our three clients wanted to work on like a, a documentary style video to raise awareness of, yeah, what it's like, as Joanna said, what it's like to live 
um, with an acquired brain injury, with a little bit of a focus on that coming from like a younger person's perspective, because I think each each of the group members are in their early 20s. So yeah, that's the project they decided, so we, we ran with it. Would you say it's a, a unique approach? Um, oh, I don't think it's necessarily unique. There, there's, a lots of, there's lots of evidence base behind um, group therapy to start with, but also doing groups uh, with, a, with a project, uh, from a project perspective. So not necessarily unique. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's definitely, we think probably the most effective way of working on a person when they've got what we call cognitive communication difficulties. Um, but yeah, it works well, and that's why we, we, we love running them. Next, Matthew goes on to talk about cognitive communication disorder in a little more detail. There's more and more evidence base behind behind it in general. Um, so, so for 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 a long time, I guess it was probably maybe a slightly misunderstood part of uh, part of our area of speech and language therapists, but also uh, from a from a communication difficulties perspective. Um, but yep, there's definitely more more sort of research now behind it, um, especially around how to um, how to manage it and how to provide intervention. So. I think, from personal experience, I think it's uh, it's now more understood. Um, we certainly get a lot more referrals now with people who present with what we call cognitive communication difficulties or disorder. Um, I still think there's probably a lot of people out there that potentially have it and, and, and are still not getting referred to, to services. Um, but yeah, definitely the, 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 yeah, it's changing. It is changing, it, it's, it's more understood and we are getting more referrals, which is good. I think possibly the, the impact that it can have. So, so people with cognitive communication difficulties, um, you know, really struggle in terms of potentially um, participating really well and effectively in a in a in a conversation. Um, and it, it, but it just it really um, impacts all manner of aspects of the way we communicate and interact with each other. Um, and communication is essential for building relationships and friendships and maintaining those relationships and friendships. So. Um, I think it's about being aware of, of potentially what the difficulties could be, what impact they can have, um, and most importantly, where to get help uh, and how to work on it. So. In his talk, Surviving the Battle, a presentation for health professionals, Duran talks about his recovery journey and the steps he's had to take throughout his progress. Here, we ask Duran what helps to keep him motivated. I want to say my determination is, was the key. You, I weren't going to let something, I know it might sound stupid, but for me, I weren't going to let something that I can't see rule and defeat my life and define who I am. So that was my determination to not not defeat my my disability, but to work alongside it and, and own my disability. And it was, that was the main thing, just to just to make myself get through it and make sure like, no, I'm gonna be fine, I'm gonna be cool, and look where I am today, so it definitely has worked. We asked Duran what advice he would give to fellow brain injury survivors based on his experiences. Accept your new self, accept the new you, um, be very focused and determined, and determined on your goals and focus on your goals and make sure you've got your army around you, make sure you've got the people around you that are gonna help you through your battles, help you through your worst of times and still push you up to become the greatest that you wanna be. But yeah, just um, keep focused, focused on what you want in life and focus on your goals and you'll be sorted. So when Finding acceptance is a big part of Durant's talk as this is what enabled him to be able to make advances in his recovery. I would say for me it was... Yeah, for me it was when I was watching a certain person on, on TV, on YouTube, and his words really hit home for me and that made me accept like, you can't change, you can't, it's, it's, no black and white, you can't change black and white, just accept, you just have to just crack on and accept who you are. The individual Duran is referring to is former NFL wide receiver turned motivational speaker Trent Shelton, who uses his social media channels to inspire and motivate. And don't get me wrong, it was an overnight thing, 
It wasn't. It, it has taken a while, but I can. I can happily say when that day come where I wanted to accept and I accepted who I am. It, everything's been fine for me then. So, yeah, it was. It was yeah, it was good. I think that was that was sort of within the first six months, wasn't it, of injury? It was yeah, when you it were. Was. It was it when was. you were um, in your inpatient rehab towards mm. yeah after you'd had the accident so probably about i don't know five or yeah, five, months five months in five months that's in. when you sort of started feeling a little yeah. bit more like that yeah yeah for those interested in finding out more about duran's story there is a link in the description of this video to his talk in the description you'll also find a link to matthew nakaneski's work on cognitive communication disorders for more on the latest news in neuro rehabilitation, subscribe to the channel and visit nrtimes.co.uk.